Hey guys, so first of all, I just want to acknowledge you all as young, intelligent, beautiful, amazing, hardworking, creative black students. And I want to especially just recognize that for those of us in majority white settings, this time must be a really crazy, weird time. And people aren't going to really understand it. And, you know, this is personal for us. You know, my daughter might as well hold that sign. I've been stopped by police for no reason. And they've made weird references to me being killed. I've had cops call on me for sitting down in a park with my wife, like just randomly, right? So they don't understand. This is an everyday thing for us, right? But thankfully, a lot of people right now are standing up. It's really hitting home. So let's let's just, I want to go through and, and give you probably some resources because people are going to be coming at you with all kinds of weird reactions. Uh, they might genuinely want to know how you feel. They might be concerned. They might be looking for you to tell them what to do, even though they're adults in these spaces, you know, just because you're black. And that itself is kind of problematic. Or maybe you just for yourself want some resources. So let's get into it. I want to start off by just bringing up this article written by former President Barack Obama. All right. And I've been long saying what we need is a movement, not a moment. All right. So while people get enraged and they come out and they protest that's good but you want it to keep on going you want this momentum to keep on going all right and so to cut it short you can read the article look out for it but he talks about the bottom line being that you shouldn't have to choose between protests and politics and look out for this theme false dichotomy being forced to choose between two things that you really shouldn't be forced to choose you need to do both all right we have to mobilize to raise awareness and organize to effect political change all right now on that you know a lot of your peers are going to be hashtag black lives matter you know and a lot of y'all are expressing a frustration because you know some people don't do it and it's like if they're ignoring it or it doesn't exist or it doesn't matter for them but then some people do it and they post Black Lives Matter and then they go back to posting like their dog or their cat or whatever. And it feels like, wait, do you really care about this at all, you know? And that's genuine what you're feeling there. And this kind of performance allyship is not helpful. And this is the words that you can use to call that out, all right? And you could pass them, put them on to, to this article here, all right? So just putting a hashtag or just going out one day is, yeah, just putting a hashtag, you know, one comment, that's nothing, all right? And they break it down here. This is really good, you know, how to spot basically fakers, right? A simple post, you know, is disbelief, like you really didn't know racism was still around, seriously. Like George Floyd isn't the first guy to get killed. What about Ahmaud Aubrey? Just a couple weeks earlier, you know, completely innocent. And where was the outrage then, you know? For us black people, we were outraged, but, you know, what about them? And then everybody else, like, pass the money back and says how, how good they are and they refuse, you know, and it's always about those bad white people, you know, it has nothing to do with me, so they're not connecting it to systemic issues. These are some of the characteristics, all right, of performative allyship, all right? But there are real ways that you could challenge them. If you really care about this, then put your money where your mouth is. And there's all kinds of ways you can do that, right? Um, especially white folks. Tell the white folks, hey, call out your white friends, all right? Inform yourself. Learn about, learn about racism. Learn about how it's connected to your privileges. This is where you tell your white folks. And we need to do it too. Especially if you live in the United States, you need to understand that the violence that the police and the brutality that the police carries out against our communities, and now actually against even white people in the U.S. who are standing with us, is not new to people in other parts of the world. I'm from the Caribbean, and we in the Caribbean and Latin America have felt the brutality of the U.S., the same brutality, all right, outside of the U.S. So you have to, we have to understand that living in the U.S., that we also benefit from certain, certain systemic oppressive structures in certain ways, at the expense of other people but of course we also feel the brunt of it and so we need to recognize you know the issues and and how they're connected and but for white friends especially like let them read all right there's a reading list attached here people like michelle alexander especially and the new jim crow if there's one book that brings it all together that's mostly about mass incarceration but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, it talks about the drug war it talks about um defunding education, all that kind of thing, all right? So this is what, if people are really genuine, 
This is what you need to tell them. Put your money where your mouth is. Speak up. Inform yourself. And also, like, do something in private. So it's not just all about for sure. All right? Now, some examples of some of the things that we can actually lobby for. And this is not wild, right? This was just like, my wife was telling me about this just like yesterday morning. And by yesterday afternoon, it was done. Right? We're talking about building a police free future what i mean by it was done well not done but the uh some official in in minnesota or something and even mayor garcetti started talking about um defunding the police all right so these are the kinds of things that we need to talk about all right and if you want to find out more information about the kinds of of issues that we need to look at or that your or that you could put your friends or your colleagues onto your peers onto this is a list right here. So like I said, a movement, not a movement. This movement has been happening. All right. Movement for Black Lives. Everybody knows Black Lives Matter hashtag, right? But not many people know that it's a whole movement. It's a whole network of organizations. Really amazing because it's not one leader. And that's one of the problems that we've had in the past, right? Where we look to one Messiah to save us, you know, and then when that one person is killed, which is what happens most times, right? Then everybody's in disarray, right? Now, here we have a whole collective movement, all right? And these are some of the issues. I want to talk real quick also about just like as black students in an all-white setting. These kinds of moments are times when institutions that are majority white are going to feel the weight of racism as some sort of guilt and they're going to want to try to, to do whatever they can to support you. And that's, that's good, all right, because we need support. All right. But in addition to that, I just want to say that as black people in a majority white space, especially as students, we can't wait. And we can't expect these institutions to give us what we need or to create the space that we need. All right. Black people have only ever gotten what they need because we fought for it and we created it ourselves. All right. So I know in majority white spaces, especially school settings, you're probably not going to get issues that you that really affect our communities being dealt with, you know, to the level that we'd like. You're probably not going to get black history being taught to you in the way that you like. So, you know what? Create that space yourself. You know, you have a BSU. This is what the BSU should be about. Not just the issues specific to your campus, but the wider issues affecting our communities, our people across the U.S., across North America, across the whole Western Hemisphere, across the world, all right? And so these are some of the things that we should be educating each other. Don't wait on the school. Don't wait on, on the institution. We need to educate each other. And that's what this is all about, right? Movement for Black Lives, right? We're talking about political power, talking about power to the people, right? And so, you know, some of the things that you probably don't know about, you could look into, all right? When you talk about black history, I know there's some frustration because people say, we always hear the same thing. We hear about MLK, civil rights movement, slavery, and that's it. Like, isn't there more? There is more. And black history starts before slavery, all right? We are great peoples coming from great nations. Like, yo, you would never learn this in school. I never learned this in school, all right? But I'm a teacher. I want to pass it on to you. I want to at least give you all a little head start, right? There are at least, there are hundreds of African cities that, that were around, that were destroyed by the Europeans, all right? So it left no evidence of it. But you're talking about the Portuguese coming to Congo and talking about it as the epitome of political organization. You know, you're talking about um, massive cities with, you know, Kumasi in the Ashanti Kingdom, you know, that's in Ghana, was present-day Ghana. And you're talking about how this seat was organized. You're talking about Mali in the 15th century being like 14 times bigger than the city of London. You're talking about the richest man in the world ever being Mansa Musa, all right, who gave away so much gold on his pilgrimage to Mecca that the price of gold in Europe dropped for like 10 years, all right? They don't teach you this stuff, right? So these are some things we need to educate ourselves. They had some good visuals here. It's not loading right now, so I apologize, all right? Um, we need to know about our other great leaders like Marcus Garvey, who came from Jamaica. You know, 
he inspired almost every single major black leader you know of like Malcolm X, his father was part of Marcus Garvey's organization. All right. Um, it's, we, we need to be aware of people like Kwame Turi, you know, and one of the things that Kwame Turi has sp spoke about Barack Obama talking about mobilize and organize, that's Kwame Turi's words, right? That's what he was all about, the difference between mobilization and organization. He was big on organization. So check this out, check this quote, right? If a white man wants to lynch me, that's his problem. If he has the power to lynch me, that's my problem, all right? Racism is about power. And Kwame Ture is the one who coined that term, black power, and he explained what it means. And it means black people have an agency over our lives, including political power. You understand? And the system, the oppressive system that gives power to racists is a capitalist system. All right. And so we have to be willing to call it out and to make those connections. And so just in case you, you, you know, just in case I forget the woman here, Kwame Turi was inspired by Ella Baker, all right? So it was a black woman who was really radical and who really inspired, you know, some of these powerful vocal black leaders whose words are with us today. You know, Barack Obama is basically quoting Kwame Turi, who was seen as a radical, you know, institutional racism. Kwame Turi came up with that. Black power, Kwame Turi came up with that, inspired by Ella Baker, black woman from way back. All right. Um, we have to see the international dynamic within our struggle. All right. And, you know, people get confused. But Fidel Castro and Cuba was the only leader and the only nation that put their lives on the line to liberate South Africa and Zimbabwe. All right. So, you know, again, capitalism is an oppressive system and gives power to racists and history will show that all right now finally we need to understand this is really critical that we are part of a community and there's a dangerous fallacious idea out there that's at the root of this whole capitalist system and it is an idea of individualism. It's an idea of me for myself. It's inspired by greed, all right? And we have to understand that in our African and non-European cultures, we have other values that can inspire and that can lead us to a better world. And one of those is this idea of Ubuntu, all right, from South Africa and also uh, Mozambique and those areas right which talks about collective and i am because we are you know i've been to africa twice and this was this was everywhere i am because we are you know and to bring that home especially if you're a black student in a majority white setting you might feel a pressure to fit in you might feel a pressure to assimilate and you have to understand that a lot of these people around you are going to be benefiting off of a system of oppression and you have a choice to make are you going to try to fit into that system and also benefit off of that system and leave your people behind? Or are you going to maybe understand that system, maybe use your access to that system to then bring truth to those people in power and assist them in dismantling the system and building something better? And brothers and sisters, it's happening already. Like I said, just today, just yesterday, right? Uh, Minnesota, someone there said they're going to dismantle the police service and build it back differently. They're going to reinvest. Garcetti and Elliot is going to be reinvesting money from the police. going to take the defund the police and reinvest that into community organizations. There is another way, all right? And we need to show people, we need to educate ourselves and then we need to point people and challenge other people to actually get involved if they really believe the hashtag that Black Lives Matter. That's it for now, guys. You can always reach out to me, you know, um, comment or email or whatever. And I'd love to hear from anybody who like has thoughts on this, wants to know more. You know, I love this stuff. This is why I dropped out from engineering to become a teacher because i love this stuff and i love you guys all right 
all power to the people and one love.